Watching Buzz with Jess Luhan. Good evening, Guam. I'm Jess Luhan. Welcome to this edition of The Buzz. Very exciting show tonight. We're going to be talking art and we're going to be talking novels and whatever else that we uh, maybe have time to talk about with, of course, uh, my guest tonight, uh, Steve Tenorio, Stephen Tenorio Jr. And quite a resume because not only is he an artist, an oil painter, a novelist, but also, uh, also a lawyer. And he's a captain. Uh, he's uh, actually judge advocate with the U.S. Army Reserve. So uh, I want to welcome, of course, uh, Stephen. How are you doing? Oh, thanks. Thanks for having me, Jess. It's, it's, a, it's a privilege to be here, of course. Hey, it's, a, it, 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 it's an honor. You know, anyone that wears the, the, you know, the, the uniform and, and, and allows uh, me to do what I do you know, on a daily basis, on the radio, of course, and of course on, on, on uh, Wednesday evenings here on the buzz. So salute to you. To you oh, again. thank you very thank, much. Thank you again for your, for your service. Stephen, uh, you know, uh, I've known you for, for some, some time now, and we talk about your novels and talk about, uh, of course, some of the artwork that you do, uh, and uh, had an under, um, opportunity to, to learn a little bit about how you conceptualize, of course, your, your, your writing and, and your paintings. And you, you definitely tailor your writings, uh, your, your novel, basically, on, on some Guam history, and you put in some fictional uh, events and, and things like that. And when I see your paintings, and we're going we're gonna to show the audience tonight uh, you know, a, a glimpse of, of uh, your paintings that, that can be seen over at, at Caja as well. But your inspiration to, to again, to write and, and to paint. Uh, well, first off, just you, you know my family. Yeah. My mm -hmm. uncle, sure. my uncle Ben passed away. You knew him, mm -hmm. and uh, my uncle Tony, my uncle Rick. Uh, mm -hmm. So you know, coming from Tumuni, I had a very rich family uh, with regards to heritage and just being a part of that community. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, I lived by the beach for a lot, a long time. Mm -hmm. So so when we're talking about me growing up in a village, everything I do, I mean, that's almost the centric concept of a lot of what I do. Mm -hmm. So if you read the book, if you see the paintings, and a lot of work I do, it's very village centric mm -hmm. you know so I've, I've always been a big fan about how one of the strengths we have on guam is coming from a village mm -hmm. you have a lot of stories that uh i'm, I'm sure you can share growing up in a particular village sure. yeah. or visiting another village so i i try to take all those stories especially the stories from my grandmother and my mom my relatives my friends and i try to incorporate it in my work and um unlike I mean, it's not fair to say unlike, but I grew up with the Filipino community too. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of the Filipino communities in Tumuning and Santa Rita and Agate, I grew up with all of them. So when I started to develop my artwork and writing my novel, I, I was writing everything from a Guam-centric perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so my idea was, what is beautiful about Guam and all the races inclusive? I mean, mm -hmm. there's always this emphasis on the Chamorro side but it's very Guam-centric. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you see my work, you know, you could probably, and the discussions we have, we can relate a lot because my focus is like you said, it's, I wouldn't go so far to say I'm absolutely objective, but I try my best to represent history mm -hmm. in a way that, that is commendable and people can appreciate it, but it's the arts. I'm not a historian. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, my job isn't to recreate history. My job isn't to, you know, promulgate a particular historical part of sure, what I sure. It's just to look for facets and different parts mm -hmm. of the past and try to bring it out. You know, when when I when I read, uh, read your novel as well as as look at your 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 oil paintings, um, th they tend to be more of the post uh, uh, Spanish colonial times right. and maybe venturing into Western and and, and, and U.S. times. Right. It's not necessary uh, further back. No, you're uh, right. You're absolutely you know? right. So. Mm -hmm. So what I consider the romantic period of mm -hmm, Guam mm -hmm. is exactly what you said. It's the post-Spanish, mm -hmm. but pre-World War II era, sure, sure. the 1900s. So I had a, a lot of good friends. Uh, they would give me pictures, uh, these cardboard, the cardboard mm -hmm. pictures of the mm -hmm. 1920s and 30s there. Uh, the Micronesian Research Center have been down there to look at a mm -hmm. lot of their photos. Mm -hmm. So in my paintings and in my work, I try to look for those aspects and bring it out. But you're right, mm -hmm. I, try to, I try to limit it just to that mm -hmm. period just because I have a fascination for mm -hmm, that period. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so again, I'm not trying to promulgate a anything pre, I mean, during the Spanish or pre-Spanish mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. after World War II. The only thing I'm trying to do is bring the essence of what I think is beautiful mm -hmm. within that period. So you're right, it's the post-1898, mm -hmm. right before the war. Sure. And mm -hmm. I hope to continue more work in mm -hmm. art pieces, just kind of focused mm -hmm. on that. And, and that's nice to see because now, now we have, I mean, we have some artwork that, that is concentrated on, on pre um, um, Spanish colonial times, right. of course, and, and we, we have a lot of those. And then uh, 
people like yourself that that have the concentration of on the on the the Spanish era right. era, and then of course we're living the times now of of post uh, post uh, you know World War Two. Right. Okay. So it, it's nice because that is all a part of Guam's history. Right. Like it or not, whatever you may want right. to label it at, at this point, we have evolved. We are here because right. of that of right. that past of that history. You know there there are and we talked about this uh, this this afternoon in regards to in regards to U.S. history. There are there are a lot of dark areas, the dark right. time dark times of U.S. U.S. history, the Confederate and mm -hmm. slavery and things like that. But if you remove that, okay, right. and the reason one of the reasons why it was so it was so uh, uh, so astonishing to have Obama as a president because when you look back at history, that is why. It was applauded and, and well received <laughs> right. Be because of the history of, of, of that, of the U.S.'s history. And we've come, we have evolved, and, and it was, it's accepted. So, uh, again, I, I like the, the paintings. As a matter of fact, uh, let me ask the, uh, our, our guys if uh, we have the paintings up to look at some of those uh, the paintings that you have. And then uh, talk us through some, some of these images, and, and uh, we'll see, um, again, the, the theme and what you were trying to get there. Is it your interpretation uh, of this? Because you, 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 you tend to paint in darker colors. Oh, is that's that, right. Is, yeah. is, is that a reason? Is no, a reason? I, I think there's a, you know, just, so a lot of the comments I mm -hmm. get is, you know, a lot of my paintings, mm -hmm. they look like Van Gogh, right? Yeah. And the reason why they look like Van Gogh is the vibrancy and the, the dark colors and the illumination mm -hmm. around the dark colors. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been getting emails. I, I, I put this thing online and I'm getting emails from people off island and they like the work and they turn uh -huh. around and they say that, you know, it's kind of like a uh, monk and he's another dark painter or Goya. Okay. okay. But okay. it's not dark in the sense that it's depression or darkness. It's okay. dark in the sense that I just like to deal with the nighttime. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I grew up uh, of, of during the, the, uh, the days of the brown tree snake shorting out the island. So I spend a lot of time like everyone else at night. And, you know, I try as much as possible. Yeah, now we have this picture. This is obviously Spanish. We have right. the the we have the is he the the wild pig there in the, right, in, in, right. in the back there. What 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 was this? What what what? Uh, well, you know, I met to be you know I met, I met this individual and she, and she was a, an astounding person and uh, you know I, I always thought that having been good friends with her she she kind of she had a tough life so her so I believed her soul to be a little bit you know roughened up. So mm -hmm. that idea of the wild pigs and everything is I was thinking another life where mm -hmm. she's a little bit more, you know, being the person she wants to be. She's mm -hmm. kind of naive mm -hmm. still to the wild, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's what the wild pigs are for and that's the artistic side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, now Steve, again, in, in, your, in your paintings, uh, how long does it take you again to, to conceptualize what you're doing? Because there's meaning again. I mean, the, the darkness uh, is representative of, of something too right. as well. And so how long does it take you to conceptualize? Because you do conceptualize your, your, your I mean, you're, you're writing a story basically. It's a storyboard right, in right. a sense, right? Right, and a lot of people have said that. You know, I've had, again, you know, I, I've, I've just been, because of social media, I've had the opportunity to get a lot of comments and they say that often. Mm -hmm. Like each, each one seems like a storyboard, mm -hmm, a, mm -hmm. a story that goes behind it. But I think it just goes back to a lot of what I do in my books. I like uh -huh. layers. Mm -hmm. So when I create something, I like to have different layers of thought. Mm -hmm. You know, like this one painting is called Faith. Mm -hmm. And the idea there is I, I'm trying to advocate this idea that on Guam, you know, not only do we have faith, we have faith, you know, during our darkest times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I try to conceptualize these ideas, I'm really just drawing from the memories mm -hmm. here. But of course, I'm pulling the images from the, the, the area, the era mm -hmm. we're talking mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. which is the post-1898 mm -hmm. to pre-World War II. So there's a lot of reflection on what I want to convey today, but I want to use the images of the time period that you and sure, I are discussing. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. And, 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 and great, and, and that's good. And, and your, your paintings uh, uh, alongside other folks' paintings as right. well can be, can be viewed, um, actually, maybe not tomorrow, but, but, but Friday. Uh, I mean, they can be viewed and, and they're on display at, uh, at the um, art gallery in uh, Akaha, right? Yes, that's yeah. correct. And what they're trying to do is they're, they're trying to do a traveling gallery. I think that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna try to move the collection. Now, you know, I'm still a novice. These eight paintings that are there, mm -hmm. I've probably painted 12 to 13 paintings in my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just only started painting this year to make a commitment towards painting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I stopped a long time ago. It just didn't make sense for me to do mm -hmm. it at the time. I had to get my law degree. I had my daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up with that Chamorro uh, sure. attitude where, hey, you got to make the sacrifice to take care of the family, mm -hmm. all your passions. Mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. put it aside for now and let's 
sure. focus on that. Mm -hmm. So this is my first real commitment. It took me about maybe eight months to put all of this together. Mm -hmm. So when the, it went on the wall, it, the paint was still wet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was still wet when it mm -hmm. went on the wall. So I, I, again, um, paintings are, are well, for, for, for the folks who have not been to, to right. Kaha, can, can, can you tell them again how to get there and, well, and yeah. their hours? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's open between 10 to 5 mm -hmm. p.m. Uh -huh. and this is right by the Guam legislature. Okay, okay. Yeah, so it's in the Turlahi building, building. I think okay. that's what it's called. Okay. And hopefully if we move it, then we'll put it out. And uh, KOEN has been pretty good uh, about giving out information that when I shoot them the images and the time and day, mm -hmm they go ahead and just there we go. pop it out. Okay. So I hope that can happen. Okay, and when we come back, uh, stay tuned. We're gonna pay some bills and come back. We're gonna talk about his novel, his latest novel. We'll talk uh, about that and uh, what else is in uh, Stephen's future because he's got quite a future. He just started. We'll be right back. <laughs>